Welcome everybody to the Brunswick County Board of Education meeting for, for the month of March 2021. We will call the meeting to order at this time and begin with the invocation by Ms. Moffat and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Benton. Please stand. We come to you this evening with gratitude and thanks. Um, just be with us tonight as we make decisions for the students and staff of this county. And Father, I thank you especially tonight for the protection that you gave Brunswick County during the tornado. And although lives were lost, we just thank you that no more casualties were found. Um, be with the students and the staff as we continue to uh, go through COVID. And we thank you that the numbers are falling. Uh, be with us tonight during this meeting and all that we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Flag from here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We have no one here for the regular public address tonight, so we'll move right on to the extended redistricting public address. And our first presentation is, uh, is this Mr. Holden. Welcome, Mr. Holden. Uh, Mr. Green will go over the rules and regulations for presenting to the board. Okay, well, just so you know who I am. Um, thank you for this uh, opportunity to share. Um, I, I, me and my wife, we moved to Mallory Creek uh, just a couple of years ago with the plans of raising a family there. And, um, and when this, the redistricting, redistricting plans came to our, um, uh, our awareness, we were very concerned. Um, primarily because of our uh, experiences with Highway 133 um, and the uh, extreme speeds at which people drive on that highway. Um, we are uh, highly aware of all the accidents, and if you just Google the number of you know, accidents on Highway 133, you'll see that it, you know it's very dangerous. Um, and uh, we both volunteer um, with the schools and I, I work with the South Brunswick and North Brunswick and, and West Brunswick and um, but it, it just is very um, concerns me a lot that I might have a child soon that, that will be driving you know tw twice the distance over twice the distance to South Brunswick uh, you know compared to North Brunswick on such dangerous roads and we just feel like it would be an endangerment to uh, many young people's lives driving that road. Um, other than that, um, you know, we feel like the youth um, in that community uh, would possibly be, you know, uh, criticized or treated differently. Being from so close to the Leland area, we feel like you know, bullying could be an issue. Um, and, and the fact that they would not be able to participate very easily in after school programs um, it would definitely hinder their ability to develop healthy relationships and have a you know a healthy experience at the school level um, and finally you know you know we moved to that community uh, with the expectations that we would be able to you know, have our family uh, and children attend in the um, Leland area schools and uh, you know we feel like for a you know that this we understand that the community and the county is growing very fast but um we would just like you to consider um possibly letting that happen to a community that has not already been established um and connected to those area schools so uh we we are happy to see that mr uh, uh or the cropper 
you know, has recommended that the school district expand the uh, classroom um, facilities at North Brunswick High School as an alternative to redistricting um, Mallory Creek students, and we fully support this plan and, and just want to encourage the school board to um, build additional classrooms at North Brunswick High School rather than move the students in Mallory Creek to South Brunswick High School. So thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your input. Mr. Stevens, I think you have some other statements. <clears throat> yes, we, we have a handful um, of folks who could not make it and um, asked if we would read uh, their comments on their behalf. Disclaimer, I'm just going to straight read. Don't, don't read into my, my uh, pronunciations or, or delivery. Uh, the first one is from Miss Emily Donovan. Dear board members, thank you for the opportunity to share public comments regarding phase two redistricting. My husband and I live in Mallory Creek Plantation with our two children. We know both South Brunswick and North Brunswick High Schools are quality learning facilities and our children would be lucky to attend either campus. However, we both work in Wilmington. The transportation burden alone would negatively impact our quality of life as well as many other families within Mallory Creek if we were redistricted to South Brunswick High School. On top of the transportation burden, we are also aware of the emotional and mental burden Mallory Creek students would face if redistricted to South Brunswick High School. Our neighborhood's children would be ripped from their long-established peer groups with friends in other Leland area neighborhoods at a volatile age between 8th and ninth grades. Studies confirm emotional and mental health have a direct impact on school learning and performance. We all know Leland is growing faster than the county can keep pace. This growth can no longer be maintained by redistricting alone. It must be addressed with proper investments in public school infrastructures. Families are making the decision to put roots down in Leland and the county is directly benefiting from their property taxes. It is past time for the county to reinvest those tax dollars where they are needed most and build more public schools and classrooms in the Leland area. We are grateful Cropper has recommended the school district expand North Brunswick High School as an alternative to redistricting Mallory Creek students. We fully support this plan and encourage the school board to build additional classrooms in North Brunswick High School rather than move students from Mallory Creek Plantation to South Brunswick High School. Thank you for your time. With gratitude, Emily Donovan. Next is uh, Ryan Huffman. Brunswick County School Board, I hope this message finds each of you doing well. I wanted to take a minute to express my concern about moving kids from Mallory Creek to South Brunswick High School. This is absolutely crazy to take kids from Mallory Creek and send them 17 miles down 133 to South Brunswick High when there is a high school 6.9 miles away. The consultant that came up with this plan was only looking at numbers and not people. Many of the families who live in the community moved there because they work in Wilmington or Leland and this is an opportunity for them to still be close to their kids if an issue happens and still be close to a job. By making this change, if, parent, if a parent works in Monkey Junction, you, now, you have now moved their kid 30 minutes further away in the opposite direction, so that morning-afternoon commute goes from 15 minutes to over an hour. Families already are already stressed enough. This is a real-life example. Those kids who ride the bus go from 30, a 30-minute 30 bus ride to more than 70 minutes based on the excerpt that I read. That is ludicrous. Another issue is sending kids down 133 and 87. Let's play that scenario out. A high school kid gets finished with a playoff football game from Raleigh in a rainstorm. After getting off the bus at midnight, they are then expected to drive down one of the most dangerous dark highways in Brunswick County on roads that flood in light rain for more than 30 minutes uh, when they could be home in less than 10. 
That is a lawsuit waiting to happen. Putting more inexperienced drivers on that road is reckless and irresponsible. Plainly, the consultant is wrong, and this should not happen. I could go on, but I think you get the point. Thank you for your time, Ryan Huffman. Next up, we have Rochelle Grass. We have a daughter who is a junior at North and a son headed there next year. Our family has been involved in activities at North and I will be assisting the girls' softball team this spring as a character coach with FCA for the second time. As parents, we like to become involved in our kids' school to encourage their teachers and get to know their peers. This would not be possible with the added commute time to South Brunswick. I believe one goal of public education is to strengthen communities by building relationships across racial and socioeconomic backgrounds this is much easier to do when proximity to your child's school enables more interaction with the staff and student population. We have had much difficulty building relationships this past year with COVID. We do not need another barrier to cross in order to build relationships within the community and the school. Thank you for passing the sentiment on to those in the meeting. Our family respectfully ask that you choose option A for Westport and Mallory Creek. Many thanks, Rochelle Grass. Next up is Azure Bednarsik. Hello, my children are young and many years away from high school. That being said, the possibility of them having to travel to South Brunswick High School is extremely concerning to me to the point that it would likely precipitate precipitate a move before the time came. Initially, my concern was around the transportation time. Per Google Maps, we are 12 minutes from, uh, from north and 23 minutes from south. That does not include bus stops along the way. Doubling the time spent on buses is not just a small inconvenience, but impacts the amount of time in their lives to do homework and extracurricular activities, not to mention sleep. Additionally, my husband drives that route daily for work, so we have firsthand knowledge of the inherent dangers. There is frequent flooding, hit animals, and accidents to contend with. A bus full of children is not as easily maneuverable or quick to respond in emergency situations as a car, making the situation even more dangerous. And let's not ignore the summer traffic that will certainly impact the route on Fridays and Mondays at a minimum. It is my hope that the safety and school home balance of our children's lives will be taken into consideration when the final decision is made. I would like to leave you with one question. Would you be willing and comfortable going through what is potentially being asked of these kids? I certainly, uh, mine would have, I certainly know what mine would have been. Next up, Adam Clark. While it is several years away, I am opposed to the idea that the evening commute for uh, child pickup would be more than double if we are redistricted to South Brunswick. Leaving the landfall area of Wilmington to drive to Southport and back to MCP would most certainly have a negative impact. Thank you, Adam Clark. And finally, John McCaskill. All. Oh, I am another concerned parent that does not want to see the kids of Mallory Creek Plantation shipped out of their current assigned schools. Having them travel almost twice the current distance down a troublesome highway does not make sense when North Brunswick High School is a few miles away. You would be making it more difficult for students and parents alike in a time that is already tough. Please reconsider this decision. Thanks, John McCaskill. And that rounds up our um, our. Uh, or comments, public comments. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Thank you. And thanks to everybody who sent a statement in. At this time, we have presentations. Uh, the first one is the MLK Health Career Scholarship. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Badish. Welcome, doctor. <coughs> Hello. Thanks for giving me some time. Uh, I'm Sanjay Bhattish. I'm a family physician in Leland. Um, 
some of your faces are very familiar. Um, I've been in Leland for about 22 years now, and uh, my children um, uh, have graduated from North Brunswick High School. Uh, about four years ago, when my eldest was graduating from North Brunswick, uh, we started talking about how some of uh, his peers, what their plans were going to be as my son was heading to UNC Wilmington. And uh, he expressed that a lot of the kids that I'd known through soccer practice and um, different experiences were not going to be pursuing higher education, uh, not because of academic prowess, but because of financial limitations. Um, so I, I pondered that for some time. Uh, my practice, which is in Leland, um, had been donating the funds that we generated on Martin Luther King Day. We stayed open, but we would donate the funds to some organization that needed the funds uh, for a few years. So I thought about channeling those funds and potentially gathering some more community members for a scholarship. Um, and at the same time, I was looking at the demographics and realizing that uh, the northern part of Brunswick County population has been exploding um, and has outpaced the ability of the health care system to actually provide the care for the population growth. So the, the, whether it's dental care, physical therapy care, primary care, cardiology care, uh, the population has outpaced the actual um, ability for the providers. So the thought had been to create a Martin Luther King um, scholarship for health careers, specifically for North Brunswick High School. And um, we were able, I was able to uh, connect with Dr. Messina, who's the um, orthopedic, um, orthopedic surgeon uh, for, and he's a sports doctor for the North Brunswick High School. And then Dr. Snow, who's k rheumatology, he's in Leland as well. So the three of us um, donated money um, and we were able to uh, help two young students uh, who are interested in pursuing a health career start um, for last year. So one is in state and one is in Chapel Hill and we were able to generate $2,500 for each of those uh, young ladies. The, uh, this year, my hope is to expand. So the initial thought was for a group of small individuals to sh sort of make it work and then uh, if it can work, to have it expand. So this year, the same three individuals, myself, Dr. Messina and Dr. Snow, are going to contribute, but uh, also there's gonna be a larger pool of individuals. So, um, for example, Shirley Steiner, um, several alumni from North Brunswick High School, um, uh, Wilmington Health Associates as well, um, uh, Emerge Ortho may potentially do it as well. So the hope is that, um, and, and we've already, um, found the two individuals who will be receiving the scholarship for this year. So we know we'll be uh, giving them $2,500, but the hope is to be able to give them more than $2,500, perhaps $5,000 each. Um, the, what, so one, so my purpose for communicating with you is to have uh, support from the uh, school board uh, to help to um, give it more, um, um, wait when I'm communicating with community members about the importance of the scholarship um, and also potentially to expand it to countywide uh, scholarship um, and with your support to be able to network with some of the larger um, companies in in the county whether it's the uh, real estate developers or Navant Brunswick Navant or the Brunswick Electric or again, some of the other larger corporations and to be able to um, use your connections to help to uh, expand it to all three high schools. Um, I've also started communication with UNCW and their scholarship program. Um, and there's a possibility that they'll be, if a student chooses to go to UNCW, that they would possibly match this scholarship that MLK gives and to, again, to, um, uh, to increase the power uh, of the donation. So at this point, uh, a student can go anywhere with that, uh, with that funding, but if it was 
connected to UNCW just uh, increase the uh, eff effectiveness of it. Um, any questions about that that I can <coughs> elaborate on? Not necessarily a question. I just want to thank you for, for you know finding the need in the community and, and, and really making a difference. You know, for a long time, a lot of us on this board have been talking about finding the need and um, you know, trying to find a solution for it. I think it's folks in the community just like you who, who see the need and work with other community partners to make it happen. So I just want to say I appreciate what you're doing um, for our students in North Brunswick. And I, I know you have my support. So. I definitely much appreciate it. I just want to, could you elaborate a little bit on the criteria? Sure. Uh, so, would be right here. so from a donation standpoint, it can be uh, somebody who's donating connected to specifically what I'm doing, which is uh, funds generated on Martha, Martin Luther King Day, or just a donation. Uh, from the standpoint of the students, it's the, the focus is on students who are from an underserved community. So it could be first time college, uh, could be from a minority group. Um, and at this point, it's ideally individuals who are interested in going into a health career path. And that can be anything from, again, medical to dental to physical therapy, social work, et cetera. Thank you very much. Okay. Have, you reached, have you been able to reach out to other people in the county, say in the South Brunswick area or the West area, to explain or maybe see if they're interested in doing the same thing, which is great, by the way, what you're doing. Um, so I was waiting for this uh, meeting here uh, before reaching out. So it was, I welcome specific entities to reach out to. Um, so if you, if, it, if you have suggestions and you can connect with me by email, uh, I'd be happy to reach out. So, um, but that was, that was the plan. Right. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Oates, uh, <clears throat> do you think um, our guidance head here in the, uh, the main office can make contact with Dr. Adish to uh, kind of help coordinate that? Certainly. We typically uh, <clears throat> run any of the scholarship information through our um, student support department working with Ms. Meredith Lloyd. Uh, she supervises all the counseling services who would in the high schools mm -hmm. and well across the county and she would definitely push that information out to our um to our counseling departments um, with as you said with the weight of the, the board of education behind it it definitely would be um something that would be moved to the forefront to, to, to get more attention so i don't think that would be a problem at all and if you will uh we'll ask her to contact you and uh, we'll try to help any way we can to uh Father, what you're doing, because we, we love the idea Fantastic. and what you've done. I communicate with Ms. Lloyd in the past, so oh, that, would, that would be great. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. We're up to District Spotlight. Back to Mr. Siemens. Hello again. Uh, it's, it has been a busy week of, or busy week, busy month of some positive things happening uh, in the in the school system. I want to start like we did last time, going over some grades uh, uh, across the district. We we did I think five or six schools uh, last board meeting. We'll run through uh, five or six more. Just want to highlight the number of A honor roll students and A B honor roll students because you obviously right now. Uh, school is a challenge and to keep that feet up is, is something amazing. So Jesse May Monroe, and these are uh, for grades three through five uh, from the first semester. Jesse May Monroe uh, has 49 students uh, with A honor roll status and 75 students with AB honor roll status. Bolivia has 16 students in A honor roll status status and 133 students in AB status. Lincoln, 97 students in A honor roll status and uh, 61 in AB honor roll. Waccamaw, uh, grades three through five, uh, 45 students in A honor roll status, uh, 78 in AB honor roll status. And then when we bump it up to grades six through eight, We've got 18 A honor roll students and 49 AB honor roll students. Uh, middle school, Town Creek Middle School 
93 A honor roll students, 150 AB honor roll students. Uh, Shalope Middle, this is quarter two. Um, 52 students, A honor roll. 86 students, AB honor roll. South Brunswick Middle School, same thing, uh, Q2. 51 students in A honor roll status and 87 students in AB honor roll status. And finally, uh, for this update, North Brunswick High School uh, has 177 students in A honor roll status and 135 students in AB honor roll status. So, you know, it's uh, it, it can be done and they're doing it. And I think that's a pretty uh, big feat. And we'll continue to, to pass along grades just to spotlight that um, through all the challenges, there is a lot of success to be highlighted. Speaking of, this is something uh, that was uh, given to me for the fall semester. You know, the career and college promise uh, is a big, uh, a big benefit to our students. I mean, you get, it's, it's free college credit, college courses. So we've got the president and dean's list for uh, the fall semester, uh, career and college promise, president and dean's list, list. So the president's list is students who have achieved at least a 4.0 GPA while taking a minimum 12 credit hours in one semester. So making the president's list for the fall semester, George Rippey Rayner, North Brunswick High School, Helen Rippey Rayner, North Brunswick High School, Megan Wolf, North Brunswick High School, Jordan Sturtz, North Brunswick High School, Alexis Dombrowski, West Brunswick High School, and Annabelle Griffin at West Brunswick High School again, uh, too. Then the Dean's List, which is students achieving 3.5 to 3.99 GPA with a minimum 12 credit hours, Thomas Bost, North Brunswick High School, Devin Martin, West Brunswick High School, and Anna Frazier, West Brunswick High School. We do these, uh, these spotlights as well. North Brunswick High School, this is the seat, career and college promise student spotlight for March. George uh, William Rippey Rayner, uh, we heard that name. He's the president's list um, and will obtain 17 college credits this semester. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, Kirsten Martin at South Brunswick High School is the March 2021 CCP student spotlight. Has earned 10 college credits, will earn 13 additional college credits this semester. I mean, what a head start, guys. John uh, DeStefano, West Brunswick High School, will obtain three college uh, credits this semester. And uh, one last note on the CCP for people who, anyone who wants to learn more about it, tomorrow uh, the district is doing a Facebook Live event. It'll be on the high school Facebook pages, so you can pick your favorite high school. And at 6 p.m., we will be, uh, uh, our friend Mr. Payne will be detailing uh, the benefits, you can ask questions uh, in real time and find out more about this program. But you see all the hours uh, in college credits that some of these kids are getting. Uh, there are also, I told you it was a busy, busy, um, busy, busy uh, month. I want to go over the all district band students uh, because, boy, talk about difficult times. Music. Um, Leland Middle, these are students who made the Brunswick County All District Band. Leland Middle School, India Bernecker, South Brunswick High School, we've got Caitlin Inglet, uh, Ren Whalen, Samuel Myers, Brianna Reeves, Reagan Streeter, and Alex Patterson at West Brunswick High School making the, the All District Band. Uh, we have Jessica Pina, Nevin Seat. And then at South Brunswick Middle School, uh, we have Anna Edwards, uh, Braylon Anderson, Mean Tram, Clayton Swanson, Bobby Dobbins, Ellery Davis, Sam Weaver, and Hayden uh, Delaire. I'm not done yet. I've got a couple more things. You got, we're coming off of Black History Month, uh, wrapping up. We wrapped it up. And I want to just give a shout out to Cedar Grove Middle School. Uh, they, uh, the school library media coordinator out there, April Rogerson, is the mastermind behind a lot of things, uh, always rocking creative ideas out there with the Bulldogs and the media center. 
And she's uh, one of her, her latest things was the Black History Book Bistro that just wrapped up. And at this bistro, students explored a digital, a digital book menu. Uh, they created a digital uh, foldable, enjoyed bistro snacks while they're reading the books, and then they each selected a print or digital book from the Cedar Grove Black History Collection. While we're on Cedar Grove uh, Middle School, that, I think that's a, one of my favorite photos. That's how you read a book. Get comfy and just enjoy it right on. At the committee meetings, we were talking about the Battle of the Books, and it came up. Uh, Ms. Dixon was talking about the setup that they have. It was like master control, so I thought I would uh, throw this uh, shot in here. That is, what, like five or six monitors and you had all media coordinators you had um uh di digital learning specialists all in different um uh helpful uh modes so that's what it looked like and it was you heard how she explained how it, it was unique this year and they pulled it off pulled it off successfully that's your winning team cedar grove middle school they uh, are your uh, 2021 middle school battle of the book uh, winners. So kudos to them. Wanted to give them a little shout out. And then finally, you guys a month or so ago uh, passed that resolution to get us some, um, get our to the governor to get our uh, teachers on board with vaccinations sooner than uh, later. Boy. And yeah, who's that guy? So what? Basically, <laughs> last week, our students started. Uh, I'm not students. Our teachers and our school staff started getting vaccinations uh, uh, with the aid of Brunswick County Health Services. And then this week, it's happening again at several different locations where um, all of our uh, school employees, whoever wishes to get a vaccination, they have the opportunity at uh, a number of times. So we're very appreciative appreciative of that. And it looks like our leader uh, is a member of the first rounders as well. <laughs> I just want to say, um, again, kind of echo what Mr. Siemens had just said about the Brunswick County Health Services, just thanking them for um, getting all of this together. And also, I was able to just contact some of the folks there at the Brunswick County Health Services and simply ask for an extension of time to accommodate our staff. Um, and they graciously agreed to do that within, without any hesitation and extending that hour to 7 p.m., which would give our folks time after the completion of their day uh, to, to get the vaccination. So I definitely want to encourage all of our staff members who um, wish to, to go ahead and get the vaccine done. Um, I jumped in I, at the first opportunity we could get to go out there. Uh, actually, I was parked beside Mr. Pascal from West Brunswick and we got ours yesterday together. Um, so other than this good Halloween picture, we can um, definitely use, use it to uh, encourage other folks to go get theirs, get theirs done. Do you have a number of uh, staff that have been vaccinated so far? Actually, we do not. I can tell you, based off of the survey, the interest we had uh, about a thousand people, a thousand uh, uh, employees uh, say that they were interested. This is when before teachers and school staff were even uh, bumped up on the list. We were trying to kind of poll the crowd to see what the interest was. And our final numbers are right at a thousand, maybe just over a thousand, and that doesn't include people who may have already gotten uh, the the uh, vaccination and just didn't take part in the survey because the survey was just to uh, to say that you would be willing to to do it so that we could put some plans together. And now with the rollout that Brunswick County Health Services is doing with these multiple locations, um, it's. We would have to guess. We don't have an, a way to know exactly who's do, uh, received it, but you'd have to think that everybody was on board really quick. And now that they, the opportunity is there, that they're taking advantage of it. We told they did 400 vaccines last week, and all appointments were full. So I was the Thursday, just that. Yeah, Thursday just alone. last week they did 400 plus whatever, however many people got in when they got excess vaccines at Odell. So we should be well on our way to uh, making some progress here. So for clarity, how many staff, for the for everybody out there in TV land, I mean, how many are, you know, on staff in Brunswick County? 
that could receive a vaccination. We have, I think we have a, somewhere around 1,600. Uh, I mean, that was a number from, uh, uh, from a years past, but ballpark area around 1,600, and uh, that would probably include part-time and full-time. And so uh, if you go with 1,000 a, a indicated, just to be a part of our plan that we we're going to put together, not including those who, um, you know, were already, uh, you know, allowed to, 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 um, to get the vaccine. I think we're well over half, well over. So, um, and I think that'll, as more people get it, I think that'll, that'll ease a lot of the people who have been on the fence as well. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. <clears throat> Last you'll hear of me today. So. Next we have Teacher's Voice by Teacher of the Year, Ms. Jenny Bryan. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Oates, to the cabinet, uh, for, for folks joining us virtually. Thanks again uh, for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. We are actually going to take a break from the traditional teacher's voice episode, but I look forward to sharing about more outstanding Brunswick County Schools teachers in April and May. Tonight, I'd like to update you on where we are with a TAC initiative to promote social emotional learning in our classrooms across the district and to also share a bit with you about what I have been up to as the 2021 Burroughs Welcome Fund Southeast Regional Teacher of the Year. But first, what you'll see on the screen in front of you is our first edition of Tap on Deck, which is a teacher curated toolbox for social emotional learning. Our tech realizes the importance of social emotional learning for our students and we wanted to work together to put some practical and easily accessible resources into the hands of our teachers across the district. So in this slide deck, teachers can learn about the basics of what social emotional learning is and why it's important. Why it's important not only to us as a district, as it's part of our strategic uh, plan, but it's also important to our state board of education. Um, and find out about more PD opportunities that we would uh, encourage our teachers to do to take a deeper dive. Once that, having done that, teachers can then uh, navigate to the grade level band that is most relevant to them to get some teacher curated um, materials that they can use to implement social emotional learning in their classroom. And then they can even access tips and resources for a little bit of self care. So our plan is to release another edition of this to teachers in April and then again in June to keep teachers thinking about how they can roll this into their instruction next school year. And I have shared this document or this slide deck with you in an email so you can have some time to, to take a closer look and to go through it at another time. I really want to thank the TAC members who assisted me in this project, Lisa Bannister from Southport Elementary School, Carly Jacobs from uh, Town Creek Middle, Laura Askew from the Early College, and a special thanks to Ms. Meredith Lloyd in Student Services and our Student Services Department for reviewing the work that we did on this. Now, switching gears to what I have been up to as the 2021 Burroughs Welcome Fund Southeast Teach uh, Regional Teacher of the Year. It has been a busy week, and if this past week is any indication of the future, I have a very busy year ahead for myself. Beginning last Tuesday, I had the opportunity to sit down and be interviewed by Dr. Marianne Wolf of the Public School Forum of North Carolina for the TV show Education Matters. And we were talking about the topic of how to recruit and retain a highly qualified teacher in every North Carolina classroom. That episode premiered uh, Saturday evening on WRAL and has run in syndication on PBS and UNC TV since then. So in preparation for that interview, I put my thoughts to paper and the result of that was an op-ed published in Ed and C today. Uh, and I have shared those links to those two pieces with you as well. And then on Wednesday of last week, uh, Representative Charlie Miller hosted me in Raleigh at the General Assembly, and I had the opportunity to meet with him and Representative Eiler to talk about education in North Carolina. I was honored by Re Representative Miller to receive a North Carolina flag that had flown over the Capitol building on the floor of the House, so that was a really neat moment. 
And that brings us to yesterday. Yesterday, I met the rest of the 2021 Teacher of the Year team at our State Teacher of the Year interviews in Cary. While there, we learned that we are all Teachers of the Year for the state who will be engaged in the work of advocacy for our North Carolina public school students and teachers over the next year. The State Teacher of the Year announcement, which will, be, uh, which will happen on April 9th, just determines who's gonna be the captain of our team. I'm excited about some of the opportunities on my horizon. Next Monday, I will be participating in a roundtable discussion with the other district teachers of the year from the Southeast region. We're gonna be meeting with Julie Pittman, who is Superintendent Truitt's advisor on education or educator engagement. And our conversation is going to be focused on gaining insight for creating a communication system for teachers to collaborate with state leadership. And over the course of the next couple of months, I've got to be working up the courage to jump out of a plane with the Teacher of the Year team and the U.S. Army's Golden Knights. So um, I am grateful, and I'm so grateful for the leadership opportunities I've had as Brunswick County Schools Teacher of the Year. And I know that it has prepared me well to represent the Southeast region and all North Carolina students and teachers should I be fortunate enough to be selected as the North Carolina Teacher of the Year. So thank you all for your time this evening and uh, be checking your emails later on for those links. Thank you. And you are our captain, so you know that. <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. At this time, we need uh, to approve the uh, meeting agenda. Are there any corrections to the meeting agenda? I'd like a motion to approve with three additions. Uh, in addition to add ATMC contract as an action item, remove number two as a consent agenda item, and to add a discussion item for Mr. Robert, uh, Robinson as a, for bullying, please. I'll second Mr. Benton's motion. We have uh, a motion with one deletion and two additions by Mr. Benton and a second by Mr. Barger. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? So that the meeting agenda is approved. Uh, you have the uh, minutes for February 2nd meeting. Um, any corrections to the minutes? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Barger. Mr. Robinson seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? So the uh, minutes are approved for February 2nd. We have a long list of consent items uh, that you've been through today. Can I have a motion to approve the consent items? So moved. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Barger, seconded by Mr. Yeah. Robinson. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Consent items are approved. We're down to action items. Audit contract renewal. Yes, my items normally would be at a finance committee meeting, which we did not have uh, scheduled for earlier today, so that's why I'm bringing these items as action items uh, to today's board meeting. The first item is the audit contract renewal. Um, the board contracts with Anderson, Smith, and Wyke to perform independent auditor services. Um, there is no change in the fee for the coming year of 37500 and we are recommending approval uh, to move forward with this year's contract. Any discussion? I have a motion to approve. So moved. We have a motion to approve the audit contract renewal uh, by Mr. Barger and a second by Ms. Moffitt. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? So that's approved. Repayment on bank loan. Yes. Um, the board entered into a guaranteed energy savings project back in 2017 which benefited uh, the schools of much needed uh, energy efficient equipment, which really just tags to what Ms. Sue was talking about earlier today. At the end of those projects, uh, which were completed in 2019, uh, the loan uh, repayment project began. And uh, for a year and a half uh, after 
uh, starting up with the loan repayment, there were excess savings uh, in the projects, or to the loan, I should say. The, pro- the objective of the program is that the savings that you uh, achieve from, co- from energy savings will offset your loan payment, but this million uh, and a half, 1.2 million actually, was in excess of that. And so that money has fallen into fund balance, and uh, if the board chooses to take a million of that out of fund balance and pay it, prepay it on the loan, it will save a half a million dollars of interest in the 20 years of the loan. So you're recommending that we... Prepay a million dollars on the loan. Any discussion on that item? He's going to save us half a million dollars. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Motion to approve. Second. (laughs) Mr. Barber makes a motion to approve the repayment on the loan. And Mr. Robinson seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The repayment is approved. Budget amendments. The first one is state number six. Um, You see a lot of activity here, a lot of uh, pluses and minuses. Uh, Most of this is moving funds between programs within state funds. This is kind of an accounting thing. You see uh, in the descriptions, you see a number of programs uh, starting with CRF, that's Coronavirus Relief Funds. What we did at the end of December was uh, for the money that was not spent in the appropriate programs, we moved that money into the uh, PPE line, which is the second to the bottom. So we increased that one by 242000 which was really the excess from the other programs that hadn't been spent, so that nothing would revert. Uh, and then the other items on there, CTE normally moves money between um, program 13 and 14, uh, and that's a wash, and then textbooks. Um, there's a process where if you're going to spend the textbook money, you have to move it out of one program into another. If there are no questions, I'll move on to federal. This is the first budget amendment of the year. It takes uh, about half a year now to get the funding situated with the state, uh, with the federal, with the, the federal funds. They come, they trickle in, and this is a true up of what we have on our side in the general ledger and what has uh, been allocated already um, by the uh, in the, these federal programs. Nothing new, just just a truing of the books. Oh, there's actually one item I did want to point out. Uh, program 163, it's the $2.9 million. That is the CARES fund. We received that money uh, very late in the year last year. I think it was June. Or maybe, and uh, so this became carryover money. Uh, we really didn't start spending it until, until July, August, September. Um, so that is just being put out, placed on our books. Special Revenue Fund Number 7, uh, Medicaid fee-for-service as a normal occurrence. Um, the MLK fund donation, this is uh, to appropriate the funding that came from um, Dr. Badish's um, uh, project. Uh, sales tax refund uh, for board members that aren't aware. We are not a tax-exempt entity, but we are able to uh, get a refund for the local portion of sales tax, so that 2%. At the end of every fiscal year, we apply to get the 2% back. So this is to appropriate those funds. The Center for Advanced Studies uh, is a position that uh, school system and BCC share equally, 50-50. We pay the employee, and then BCC reimburses us half. Capital number nine, um, the bus, the yellow bus replacement cycle is such that when buses reach a certain number of miles, uh, the state re, uh, replenishes or replaces those buses, and um, they set up a financing arrangement to make those payments, and this is just one of those payments. There's not new buses, it's just a, a payment on existing uh, lease and more sales tax money for Fund 4 from for capital project. So unless there are questions. Um, any, any discussion or questions for Ms. Cahill on these budget amendments? I make a motion to approve. Second. Mr. Benton makes a motion to approve the budget amendments. Mr. Barger seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. So the budget, budget amendments are approved. ATMC Wide Area Network Services. 
somebody going to go over that? Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to uh, bring this contract to you this evening. So Brunswick County Schools has a long relationship with, uh, we call them ATMC here in our county for wide area network services to, for our schools. Today this is contractually with Atlantic Sea Winds Communications LLC. It's a subdivision of ATMC. So this is for the fiber connections to all of our schools that give them network and internet uh, capability. So our current status is that this existing contract will end June the 30th of this year. The service is eligible for a substantial discount with federal funding. Uh, that program is called E-Rate. It's uh, overseen by USAC. The program guidelines require that we have a contract in place when we apply for that discount. The service will begin in July 1 of this year, but we need the contract to be in place uh, when we put our application in. Our application deadline is March the 25th. So, and based on the district's free and reduced lunch rate, along with the CEP program, which is community eligibility provision, uh, it is estimated that the district will be uh, eligible for a 90% discount on this service. So it is recommended that the board approve the Atlantic Sea Winds Communication LLC contract for $826,924.32 allowing the E-Rate Administrator for Brunswick County Schools to file an application with USAC for the discount. The estimated cost of this contract after the discount for Brunswick County Schools is $82,692.43 annually. This contract is for three years and E-Rate applications for the discount will be applied for each year of that contract. Thank you. That's a nice discount. Uh, any other discussion about this item? I make a motion to approve it. Second. So. <laughs> uh, very quickly, we have a motion to approve by Mr. Robinson the ATM Wide Area Network Service with the discount of something in the area of $800,000, seconded by Ms. Moffitt. All in favor say aye. Aye. There's no reason to discuss that. All against. <laughs> of course, that passes. Next, we're moving to discussion and announcements by superintendent and board members, and I think Mr. Robinson wanted to make some comments about um, some suggestions about bullying in the schools. Yeah, I'll be brief. Uh, I've had an opportunity to talk with uh, several people out in the community, some students uh, and different folks, and I've done this over a period of time. Uh, we know that bullying is really, it's, it's an age-old problem. We're not going to make it go away tomorrow by the things we do. But what I, I have an eventual goal of possibly uh, seeking the board's support in time uh, with uh, developing a group to review our current policies and procedures and how we're dealing with it. But first, uh, in discussion with uh, another board member, what I would like to suggest is see if Dr. Oates maybe could give us some information in the next, maybe the next board meeting um, to learn some of our statistics, uh, what we currently have in place, how things are going presently, and then in time make some decisions going forward, maybe develop some practices that we can kind of improve things. I know a lot of folks have seen some issues in the past day or two that's been brought up to the attention thanks to social media, and that's okay. Uh, it's important that we're aware of it, and then, uh, but on the flip side, it's our obligation to try to do something about it or, or the best we can as a school board in working with the staff. So what I would just like to do first is uh, get some information brought back to the board, um, some of our statistics. I saw some of them uh, about a year or so ago, so mine currently are outdated. So that's what I would like to do first and support with the board. Dr. Rose, could you, uh, just for the new members on the board, kind of go over what the bullying reporting uh, process is 
Certainly. Um, one of the things that we do yearly through the Student Support Department, and um, Ms. Quillen is here as well, she can definitely add to it, but it really is kind of funneled through Ms. Lloyd out of counseling. And um, yearly training with staff to um, understand what bullying is, how it's reported, and then we go into to then give the information of how to report it. If you've gone to any school website, individual school website, you will see that there's a link for bullying uh, information and for bullying um, reporting. Any student, any staff member, any parent can simply click that link and fill that information in if they like, but that's not the only way bullying can be reported. It can also re just be reported verbally to um, a staff member and also anonymously. Yeah, we, we take it that way as well. Uh, the biggest thing we want folks to understand, whether students, staff, or parents, is that we have to be made aware of the situation before the situation can be addressed. Um, so once that form is complete, the, it goes directly to um, the counseling department at the school, and that kicks off the investigation of, of the bullying. Um, a lot of times, however, uh, students will be reluctant to report but um, any type of bullying. And sometimes it's difficult if you have an anonymous report. Uh, so that's why we encourage the, um, the form that's online to be filled out completely and for folks to be forthcoming um, in reporting. So we definitely want parents to be able to, to feel comfortable in um, having conversations with the school principal or the school counselor to take care of those issues. Um, just to give you some of the um, statistics that I have already, uh, we started an online form back in the 17-18 school year. And the first year that was put online, we had 76 reports um, th that first year. Um, now, as of today, because I was, um, I've worked with Ms. Lloyd and had her give me, try to work on some up-to-date statistics, had seven schools to report as of today. The, the information is actually due by the end of the week. Uh, but with the seven schools that we had that did report, um, last year's number was 27. We had 27 online. Let me make sure I'm giving you the correct information I have right here in the email. Um, the 18, I'm sorry, the 1920 school year, there were 27 reports. Uh, 10 were, were done online and 17 were done by some other means. And thus far this year, um, we have 18 reports, 13 done online and five through other means. So once we have the other 13 schools, I will be able to give you more information on that. Um, and I'm sure Ms. Lloyd wouldn't mind at all coming in explaining and, and talking more in depth about what goes into the actual investigation when we do that. So that's not a problem at all. Be glad to do it. Love to work with her uh, going forward. And like I said, uh, I think now's a good time to at least get a conversation started and uh, see where we can do things uh, in the future to improve things. And you make a good point, though. Folks are very resistant to, uh, they're hesitant to report these things. And uh, and there's that's a very various reasons, but it's, it's a, item that's uh, close to me and I want to see us, you know, potentially improve upon how we're dealing with it yeah. as going forward. Yeah. And as far as announcements that I have, they're definitely brief. Um, as you can see, the listing of the next board meeting for April 13th. Um, but what I really wanted to just focus on, it's not an announcement of we, we're all aware, um, but I do this, we do this every time that there's, um, we lose someone in the system. Um, for whatever reason, I just wanted to bring attention, further attention to uh, and express condolences to the family of Mr. Barry Glick, uh, the substitute, of course, who was a longtime substitute and contributor to our school system, who lost his life in the, in the tornado a week or so ago. Uh, I know Mr. Siemens had put out some information on our social media, on our Facebook page about him and highlighting some of the things that he had done, but I just wanted to make sure that that was... Um, he was acknowledged and his work was acknowledged in this meeting as we've done with uh, num uh, numerous other folks who have worked for us in the system. So definitely a, an asset that we will miss. And again, the condolences and um, expressions of grief to his, his family. Thank you, Doctor. I 
We now need a motion to go to closed session. So moved. Mr. Barger makes a uh, motion to go to closed session. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Robinson. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? 